everybody this is rob bailey here and uh we've got matthew here today is our special guest uh wanted to snag him again this is like his fourth <laughs> testimonial with us i guess <laughs> if you want to call it that um and matthew is crushing it in in a niche that you would never guess and uh basically i, I wanted to get him back on today to tell us a little bit of an update about his story um because matthew's been uh in our ecosystem for about like two years so, somewhere around there and he's got some nuggets to drop for you guys and some keys to success that I think everybody here can learn from. And best of all, he's using the model that we like the best, the one that we teach in our program. He's using the SWAS model, right? So uh, welcome, Matthew. Thanks for hopping on and taking some of your valuable time to jam and share with us today, man. Yeah, dude. Anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, let's just uh, get right into it, man. I, I want to value your time and everybody else is watching, but um, can you give us a little bit of a... Uh, a quick backstory on where you were before you sort of found our nurture and close process and our SWAS model. Um, if you can kind of take us back to what you were doing before you sort of adopted this model, if you will. Sure, sure. So um, it's kind of a funny story. So I came in at high level, I don't know, it's probably been three years ago now, maybe four years ago. And for the first like year and a half, I was just kind of fumbling around and one day, I think that you got invited on to, or you like did a video on um, the Go High Level uh, Facebook group. And it was like you covering up with the yellow sheet, like you were covering up like the, the, the numbers and pulling away and you were talking about database activation. So I was like, what is this database activation thing? So I tried that, to hack it. That post, it by the way, will not die. It is like still yeah. there. It has like tens of thousands of comments. It's ridiculous. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I see it every now and then. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, this thing is still trolling. But um, so I, I was like, database activation. I went home and I started chewing on and thinking about database activation, like actually what it meant. So then I hacked it. I went and like did it myself and like made up my own crazy wild ag algorithm and inside a high level. And it was like crazy stuff was like happening. Um, you know, like people are getting text messages, doing all kinds of, I was like, okay, I'm just going to pay this guy. So, um, so I stepped away and then I decided to go pay Rob. I came into nurture and close. I think it was like right when 2.0 came out or maybe like 1.0 came out and then I like upgraded when 2.0. So came on, upgraded, got, went through the coaching program and I went and did, um, my first database activation, which I did it and I activated shit, shit. I don't know. It was like a thousand people at once. And it was a really, really good offer. So it was like, and I didn't have, uh, it was just me and I had an assistant at the time, like that was there to intercept the leads. And all of a sudden it was like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so it was like, all these people were in there. And I was like, oh shit. So, um, <laughs> so I called up, I, I was at the time I was running a, like a sales team for a, a nightclub. I, I called up the VIP host and I was like, hey guys, um, I need some help here. Like, I need you guys to come in. So I had to come and have them come in so that we could intercept all these leads. So that was kind of like my intro into, um, SAS, or not into SAS, but into uh, Nurture and Close and into the your program. And um, ever since then, you know, it's just like, when he came out with uh, SWAS, I was like, cool, let's do it. Like, I'm down for some new stuff. So I think there's that, I, I went on a little rant there, but is, I think, does that answer your oh. initial question? Yeah. 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 That's great. That's great. And then how did it help you? So were you running an agency before that, or is this your first, was that your first swing at agency um, income, you know, getting clients, booking clients, selling clients, all that stuff? Yeah. So um, I actually, I, I'd already started, like I went through like a bunch of Ty Lopez classes and training and whatnot. And then I had started like my company. And I was at a traffic and conversion summit and a buddy of mine was, um, show, pulled his phone up and he, we were sitting at a bar and he's like, check this out. And it was like, paid, 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 paid. I was like, like while we were sitting at the bar, he was just getting these charges. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, so I am doing review management. Like I, I'm just, just doing white label review management. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't even understand it. So I started like diving into it and I was like, okay, like SAS, like, and this was a couple of years ago. I was like, SAS is the thing I want to do, but I just never had the tools that I needed to like break into that SAS market. It was like, I was trying to do it. And I think at that time, Rob, I had gotten, I had maybe two or three clients just in SAS, but I had no idea what the hell I was doing. It was just kind of like trying to figure it out on my own. Like I didn't have the coaching, which, you know, I, I'm pretty good at like figuring stuff out, but it's like, 
without having um, like coaching and somebody kind of help like a compass to navigate, like not just a map, a roadmap, but kind of a compass to help guide you through that, that program. Um, you know, I didn't really start expanding until after I joined SWAS, but uh, yeah, I had had a couple people, just a few, not where I was like making any kind of serious loot at all um, before I came gotcha. in. Very cool. Um, thanks for that, man. That's a, that's a great story. Um, and I think a lot of people of well, everybody has to start somewhere. That's the first thing, but a lot of people can probably relate to, um, to a story like that because that's how I got started. You know, yeah. it's, it's just very similar. Uh, very cool. So, so after you sort of started adopting the model that, that we teach, um, what's, what's happened recently, uh, as a result of you sort of following the, the framework that we teach. And we can talk about what that is here in a sec, if you want to. Sure. Yeah. Um, so kind of like where I'm at, I guess, with my results. Um, so I started implementing SWAS and like kind of got real serious about my agency during the pandemic while also still having a full-time job, but I got real serious about it. And, um, you know, since then, I think that we're at, like, we've added, we're just over 30 clients, um, within the SWAS model. Um, and like, we have a few like little different things that we do as a part of our program too, but, um, yeah, we're like almost 35 clients and, we've been in focusing on one niche for the last year and a half and we're actually breaking into another one right now. So it's kind I of where we're it. at. I love it. And so you went basically from like two clients just starting out to about 30, 30 to 35 now using the, the SWAS model. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, nice job. My gosh. That's so, and so what, you know, maybe you can just drop a little knowledge on folks. What is, what is um, your current offering? Like what are the clients paying you for? What problem are, are you solving for them and what services are they paying you for those 35 sure so within the the niche that i'm working in um like they are a lot of them are just single person companies so they don't have the ability to constantly stop what they're doing and like go after um you know pick up the phone or you know do lead generation or do any of these things like they they are one person they have hardly any time and they have to try to maximize it so we implemented you know, obviously SaaS um, through high level. And then we implemented, um, you know, Facebook advertising, Google advertising, and then most recently um, SEO. Um, so we're bringing that and offering that to our client base now as well. So it's like all these people that came in at that kind of like, you know, originally, not, I guess not originally a lower ticket, but like that, just that SaaS. And then um, now we ascended them and we're giving them more products and more offerings that they can take and use in their business. So, um, you know they can be more profitable and they can spend more time doing the things that they want to do which is really fulfillment like you think about it most people are really good at fulfillment but they're like they're falling off in either sales or prospecting so it's like we're implementing these systems so they're um you know they're very honestly i they're really great people and i feel like they're grateful for it i'm grateful for them as well so it's it's a really great relationship awesome man um, so, and then you told me before this, but you, I think you skipped over it, but what is the first thing that you do for these clients when they first come on with you? What's the very first thing that you do for them as a service? Oh yeah. DR. Yeah. Database. DR. Right? No, no question. There's yeah. the very first no thing question. is we, they sign contract. We schedule them like a call within three days of, um, you know, them coming on board and signing. And then it's, Hey, we're going to build out your portal. And then in addition to that in three days or in less than three days, we're going to schedule your database activation, which all the time when they get it, they're like, I, I actually have a client right now. Um, he came in and like, he honestly didn't follow the same normal process that a, sh a company would come in when they join our program. Um, he came in, it was like kind of all over the place because there's a lot of stuff that he wanted done. So it was like, DR didn't come until after him being here for a month and a half ish. And when we did the DR, he we did it together live and he just sat back in his seat and just started laughing. He's just like, I was like, what dude? He's like, this is absolutely wild. Like, and it was like, we sent out, I, I told him was like, we only did it. I don't know. I think we sent out like 300 people maybe. And it was like, yes, I want your thing. Yes. I want your thing. Yes. I want your thing. Yes. I want your thing. And then, um, so yeah, like it, it, it worked out really well for him. Um, he was very happy, but that's the first thing we do is database activation. I love it, man. Okay. So this is why I love what you've done because when you, I, I remember when, so Mitch reached out to you and she said, um, Hey, Rob would like to, you know, do another interview with you or whatnot. And you said, yeah, I don't know if I'm the best case study. This is perfect, man. I don't know what you yeah. were talking about because you're following <laughs> the three pillars, right? First thing you do is database your activation, right? That's pillar one. Yeah. Second thing is you get the SAS hooks in, you get their SAS set up for them and they start to get 
leads from their, their other, you know, earned media basically. So that's like their website, their Google, my business, their Facebook page, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is, which at this point I think is optional for, you know, a lot of people, but then you can add on additional services like Facebook ads, Google ads, review services, whatever the heck else you want, but getting those first two pillars, right. Makes this thing entirely scalable for you. And your client is happy to pay you for that because those are, all they care about is getting their schedule filled. Like you said, prospecting and selling, that's the gap that they need filled, right? They've got a leaky bucket yeah. there. You're just helping them fill, uh, fill in the holes in the leaky bucket so they can hold more water, right? Because yeah. they're probably pretty good at selling. And like you said, most are excellent at fulfillment, right? That's why they're doing what they're doing anyways. Yeah, right. definitely. Most definitely. Love it, dude. I love it. So good. So you've got a nice, tidy, profitable business at 35 clients. Um, went from two to 35. Congratulations, man. You're, you're crushing the game. Um, real quick, I'm sure people are interested. Um, I'll just tell you guys this. Um, Matthew asked me not to leak his exact niche because um, it, it would be too easy to go after. But as you can tell from his shirt and what's behind him, it's in the automotive niche. I will tell you that much. And a lot of you are not looking hard enough at these off the beaten path niches. Okay. And he found one, which is great. And now he's going to inter introduce to another one um, because you're actually, I'll, I'll let you tell it, but you, you told me before that you're getting invited to speak at, at some events and some conferences and stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So one, one way that I actually like worked my way in with like into this niche was like, I, I, I was like in clubhouse and I was kind of like trolling around in the automotive like space and kind of listening to people. And then I went in and I was like, Hey, and this kind of falls along the line of the, the Swazi and nurture model. I was like, Hey, I do this thing. Basically, are you interested in, in testing it out to see how it does? Normally it gets really great results. Like, are you interested to see how it goes? And I built up like a relationship with this guy. And it turns out that like, he is kind of like turned into a power partner of mine. Um, he invited me onto his podcast after like he came on board, he invited me onto his podcast. Like he invited me to do these things and started generating awareness for my company too. And then like, I found other people that were like that too. So it's kind of like, I guess what you would say the Russell Brunson dream 100. Um, you know, it's like finding the people that actually hold your audience and then kind of building a relationship up with them, giving them some value and then, you know, jab, jab, right hook. And, you know, you ask them for, you know, so anyways, he turned into a power partner, but, um, oh my gosh, I just, I just got sidetracked. So yeah, I got invited to a, a conference um you know last month and then there's another one coming up here in the future to where like they brought out i spoke i talked about um you know i talked about dr but we talked about doing uh dr for google reviews um and how that we you know whenever a client came on like we monetized on their google review program and uh got them some quick wins like that and um you know it's like really cool because like i experienced actually afterwards a table rush like everybody like came rushing up to me and they're like, yo, let's yes. talk. Like, what do you do this? Like, and then all of a sudden, honestly, like, it was like, Hey, do you do this? Hey, do you do this? I was like, uh, I know. I, I mean, yes, I do. So right. anyways, Not that's yet. why we decided. <laughs> yeah. That, at, that was a month ago, just over a month and a half ago. And we had so many people request uh, SEO services so that we actually are bringing on SEO uh, now to our company. So it's like, the niche wanted it. They're telling me, I don't know it. I decided to figure out like a solution to all of these people's problems because I think that there's probably a bad rap in the industry for a lot of um, companies that are there. Um, and yep. I guess I'm probably not a, can I, I'm not a, a bad business owner, I guess. And I'm, I'm actually there and genuine. And I want to take care of people. So um, and I think they see that. So at least to, on that note, I, I actually, I think that this is, pretty cool. And this goes to high level and what its capabilities are. We had a 0% churn rate up last year and actually lost our first client. It was our first client. He came on for two weeks this last month. And uh, I knew it was not going to be a good fit from the get go, but he is actually the first person in a year in three months that uh, we have actually lost. So I think that's pretty rad. And that's, yeah. again, it goes back to the capabilities, what high level does the, um, having a good process for your clients and like implementing SWAS and like, you know, there's a lot of people that have helped me along the way here. It's like, you know, it's like, I took my wallet out, I paid Rob, I took my wallet out and I paid a couple other people too. And it's like, you know, with the tools that these people have, have given us, like we were really able to excel. So it's pretty cool. It, I'm yeah. very appreciative and, and humbled that, uh, I got the opportunity to work with all oh, you guys. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. The pleasure is ours, man. Um, I, I've always, you know, said that, um, you know, my, my seven figure agency failure, uh, I had no coach, I had no mentor, I had no systems processes. I, I thought I was smart enough to figure it out. And maybe, maybe I was, I, you know, I wasn't then that, that's for sure. Or else I would have figured it out and made it work. But I'll, I'll say that, you know, the second I started hiring mentors and my first one was Billy Jean, who's like a friend of mine now, um, who I'm also eternally grateful to, but, uh, you know, like what he did for me was he shortened the learning curve and shortened the timeline. So I basically, I cut out all the trial and error essentially. And the biggest thing that that saved me was time, right? Like if I would have struggled for 10 years more in my seven figure agency failure, that would have been mm -hmm. 10 more years. I could just never get back. Right. Until yeah. I started making good money and I probably would have quit. Right. Realistically, I'm mean, 10 years, is a long time. Right. If I just try to like, just to make the pain even extra worse, right? Just go like, yeah. oh, would I do that again in 10 years? Absolutely not, right? And so I think when you're when you're looking at something, it's like, would you rather pay some money to shorten the learning curve, skip the trial or most of the trial and error, build a skill set that you can monetize this month, this week, maybe tomorrow, depending on you, right? You, you the person, but mm -hmm. surely within a month you can do this, right? Um, and then you start to build on, on these, these stepping stones. Right. And that's why, you know, this is so powerful. I mean, if you think about it, two years is not a whole lot of time to be, to get up to 35 clients, whatever it is now. And it's probably about to be a lot more, but by the sound yeah. of it. Right. So that's not that much time. And, and it's, you know, I pay for shortcuts all the time. And, and that's, I hate saying that because without context, that sounds like a, it like it can be bad advice, but, um, I pay all the time for proven things that get my time back, shorten the, the time period, um, skip trial and error, um, use proven fr frameworks, things like that. And, and I think that you're really smart to do that. And I would, and there are people that I tell, like, they're like, Oh, um, I just been burned before or this, whatever. I'm like, look, I get it. But if you don't hire us, go hire someone again. You know, it's like saying I had a bad ex. Therefore all the other people on the planet are bad people. It's totally ridiculous. Right. So yeah, what, you're just not going to get out there and date again ever. Like, well, it's, there's got to be someone out there that makes you happy, right? It, that gives you what you want out of life. It's the same with like stuff like this. It's like, okay, I read a bad book. Therefore, all books are bad. No, like guys, you have to get, get your, get out of your own way and find someone who's done what you want to do. And again, that doesn't have to be me or, or Matt or whoever, like, it, but just find someone who's done what you want to do and go pay them to get the cheat codes. That's like the fastest way to get, you know, get to where you want to go. It's like having a map drawn for you. You know what I mean? So it's, it's so it, funny. I, you I said that, you. dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's so you funny. Doing it, dude. It's a, Thank you. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean there last week I was on a podcast and it the, the what they said was is, or what they asked, it was like one random question. It was like, what would you tell an entrepreneur? Like give, what advice would you give him? I was like, Find somebody that does what you want to do and what you're passionate about and pull your wallet out. Literally those words last week. Boom. So good. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of people say, well, of course you would say that like sitting where you are, but like, here's what I know that uh, this is my exercise, right? If I had everything taken away, which choice would I make again? Right. Would I make the choice to do the seven figure agency failure with no help and struggle and have no money. Like I had seven years worth or seven figures worth of yearly income in that agency. And I was taking home almost nothing. Right. Or would I pay Billy Jean again with money that I had to scrape up to get his help to jumpstart my agency. Right. Mm -hmm. And did it suck for a couple months? Yes. Did I really challenge myself for a couple months? Yes. Did I have to put my nose to the grindstone and really apply myself and be focused and have some discipline? Yes. But literally six weeks later, we had like, I think it was like a $30,000 a month agency, right? And I'm not saying like, ignore the number, but that was all profit coming. Like that was a windfall to me and my family at the time. It was like, oh my God, I've been struggling to scrape together three grand, four grand, five grand a month. Feed my family. We just had a baby and we had another on the way, right? And so that to that, my wife was like, get it, son. Like, you know, go, like go to work, like get it done, like, you know, so it, it night and day. And I would, I would choose that again every single time. Right. So I, 
you know, I think that a lot of people will learn something from this, but I just want to applaud you for having, you know, it takes guts and, and bravery to go out and, and pull your wallet out and trust in somebody. So I applaud you, man, because now you're receiving the fruits of that, that decision. So yeah, well done. Thanks dude. I, I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Just, uh, trying to get to a hundred. <laughs> Attaboy. Yeah. Keep yeah. going, man. You're doing all the right things. And and by the way, um, the, the strategy that, that you described, you know, getting that power part, partner, you call it, and, and this is like, you know, there's a lot of ways you can describe it, but we call that a Trojan horse strategy, right? So you get one person who's the insider, right. To get you into this community that otherwise has a wall around it pretty much. And that's a great way to like, once you start getting results, you find someone to, to do the Trojan horse strategy on, or find a power partner or whatever you want to call it, three, 100 person. And now you've got a flood of opportunities and they are literally telling you what you want, what they want in your service package, right? That's a great way to go. Instead of going, I offer everything under the sun to everybody, right? Yeah. And hoping that you get a client here, there who understands what you do and the value that you bring. You're doing all the right things, man. This You're yeah. running our exact FCA playbook. It's fantastic. Thanks dude. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, man. I know Haplin actually, I, I wanted to say thank you to Haplin because there's been a lot of times where he jumped on and gave me like over, over like an amount of help that I needed. Like whenever I was like, oh shit, like I can't figure this, this thing. I'm sorry. I, I cuss. It's, it's I cuss all the fucking time. It's fine. Yeah. So, um, Haplin jumped on several calls like with me in the beginning. And honestly, he helped me through a lot of problems that like, if I didn't have him there, that, that support, then it, it honestly would have probably taken me a, a lot longer to to dial it in and like go through support and like high level and or the other problems outside of high level. So it's like hats off and thank you to Haplin as well. So he's awesome, man. That's what we're here to do, man. We're here to serve you and help you shorten the curve. So happy to do. Um, yeah, shout out to Haplin. He's he's a gangster. Uh, all right. So one final question, then I'll let you go. Um, for anyone who's on the fence about uh, adopting this model or joining our program or getting into our ecosystem, what would, what would your advice be to somebody who's looking to do what you've done, but maybe might still be on the fence about it? Yeah, I, I think it might kind of go back to what you hit the, what you had said and kind of like what I told, like when they were like, you know, what do you recommend? Like a young, an entrepreneur or whatever. It's like, you can either spend your time like wasting time, not having a system and like a proven process. And you'll spend probably years. Like, honestly, like if I, if I, if SWAS had been available, you know, a year before I probably would have been, you know, twice as far as I am right now or, or more, but, um, you know, it's like find out somebody that's doing the thing that you want to do and go learn more about it and figure out if you're passionate about it and then take your wallet out, <laughs> trust, trust the process and pay them. Love it, man. Awesome. Thanks so much, Matt. You're an OG, dude. We appreciate you. For sure. Appreciate you too, sir. Thanks, man. We'll see you soon.